And we're back. Now we're going to go over part two. And that is where we talk about... Uh, where I want to make sure we're on the same page. Let's do this in... Uh, we will do this in... Light blue. All right, the BB profiling. All right, this is basically where we're going to take... There's three parts to this, okay? This is, again, just as simple as the other ones. Very quick, very easy. All right, so we want to take the best, uh, the biggest and baddest clients. That's what our BNB, the biggest and baddest clients. And we're using bad as the, uh, the slang version, meaning good. The biggest and baddest clients, uh, transactions, whatever. And this could be anything. It could be um, based on... Um, who, when we use the T, it's always for transactions. The biggest and baddest clients, who are the most enjoyable? Who do these people like the most? All right, want to take that. It's usually going to be, if we look at like our 80-20 rule, you know, like where this percentage of the, uh, of the sales represents uh, or that, that 20% or that 10% or that 5% which is uh, often referred to as a 95-5, meaning that 95 of all the profits of a company, 95% come from 5% of the clients. That 5%, that tiny sliver, that top, if you uh, look at that, the best, most ideal clients, these are the people we want to focus on. So we want to look at those people, number one, and that alone is going to give us tremendous insight into these companies, right? It's going to be a very cool process. When you start hearing the same thing from different uh, people in different industries, it gets really, it's a very, it's a great education. Then we want to find three to five commonalities. All right, three to five commonalities. What do these people have in common? So this could be anything. And this really leads us to common traits. Okay. This leads us to a couple of uh, items here. We have demographics, demographics, and demographics are things like uh, usually more tangible things like uh, income or lifestyle, or um, and I'm sorry, not lifestyle, like income, race, gender, where they live, things like that. Then we have the psychographics, and we've talked about this before. This is more like uh, personality-based things. You guys probably want the spelling on that, so I'll, I'll write this neater. Psychographics. This is more like um, what they call the um, interest, opinions, and attitudes. Um, you know, what are these people into? Are they uh, more concerned about the environment? Are they, you know, what what are their lifestyle choices? Do they are they healthy eaters, calorie counters? And there's also what's called firmographics. Firm O, and then graphics. This is basically the same thing as graphic all right gra firmographics this is the same thing as demographics except this refers to companies um, or groups or organizations and by the way everything we're talking about works just as well with groups as organizations I should probably make a note of that uh, somewhere here uh, this is all with groups and organizations groups as well organizations I guess that's kind of the same thing. So companies as well. doesn't really matter. Companies and uh, business folks. All right, so it's basically going to be the same thing. It doesn't matter what we're, what we're talking about. But if it's B2B, you know, where it's business to business, this is where firmographics is going to come into play. So um, three to five common traits of those people. And then what's our magic word? What do we always do with everything? Starts with a P. We've talked about this again and again. What are we always going to do? Policize, right? So here we want to develop three policies to find more. To find more. To find more people like this. All right, so we find three to five common traits, then three policies to find more. Make sense? And by the way, everything we're talking about, when we say, when we talk about B to B, I'll make a quick note of this right here on this page. Um, when we talk about like B to B, this is business to business. Then we have B to C, this is uh, like consumers, business to consumer. And then B to G, like business to government. They're all, it doesn't really matter. This is all interchangeable. It's the same uh, process that we work with with any type of company that we're talking about, right? Okay, 
So now that we've got that, let's go over. Let me do this in a darker blue. Okay. This should be a better blue. All right. BB profiling. All right, let's go over some uh, some examples. So hopefully this is uh, that makes sense, right? It's very simple. The more you do this, the easier this will become. We find out who the biggest and baddest clients are, three to five common traits, and three policies to find more. Let's see what uh, what would you do in a situation where, uh, let me think. Um, let's say that we have um, an insurance agent, okay. Um, an insurance agent, and he finds out that his best people are newly married and expecting couples, all right? People who are expecting a child. So people who just got married, all right, and people who are expecting a kid, plus one, I guess. Okay, so these are the two groups that are his best people. How would you get in touch with them okay and this was uh, actually it was a partnership Ben and Lucy Micah if you remember that example what would you do if those are the best people the people that we've after doing just a little bit of research which is really simple to do by the way a lot of companies will know this it's one of the few things people will know off the top of their heads who the biggest and baddest clients are so if those were your people how would you find more all right aside from the policizing what would you actually do in this case what they did was very simple they went, and we've had a lot of people target this group. They went and found magazine subscribers, the appropriate magazine subscribers in their area. All right, they, you can actually go and buy from magazines like Prevention or Expecting or Expecting Mother or Expecting Family or um, Marriage Magazines. You can buy a list of those people um, in that, uh, buy a list of those people in whatever area you want. And this, that's exactly what he did. It took the same marketing, same everything they're doing. They just focused it on people that were subscribing to magazines for people who were about to get married or just got married and people who were expecting kids. This simple trick alone, they took the same exact same, um, the same budget that they had. They did not change their budget, right? There was no change. Remember our Delta? There was no change in the budget. And this exact same thing had a four time, then it was, what was it? Uh, 65 days, I think it was, four times as much money in 65 days. Just by changing who they were targeting, just by looking at who their best people were. And it was that simple. Makes sense? That's just one example. And a lot of times what you're going to find is a lot of people are in this category where all they need is just a little bit of refocusing of their marketing. So whatever money they're spending, they're going this way and they're getting in touch with X amount of people. But when they know that this is the pocket that they really want, they can take that same money and focus it with white hot intensity on that tiny group. And they can, they can see if you're targeting, for example, if you're sending out 10 pieces of mail um, or let, let's say you're, you're hitting everybody here one time, right? Well, with that same money, you can go after these people 10 times. You get what I'm saying? So you can get much more focused and you get your better your better uh, clients coming to you much quicker and much easier. So that's one example. There's uh, several more. I don't know how many more we need to... Uh, as I'm doing this, you guys should be thinking about how you're going to apply this and how exactly... Get those dendrites firing, how simple this is to do. Um, who We have James. James. This is one of my favorite examples. James and Casey Oman. They were apartment complex. They had an apartment complex. This is exactly what it looked like. All right, this is an apartment complex. And how do you find, let's say you go to your people. It's really simple, especially with something like an apartment complex because usually the management office will be right here and they know who the best people are, who pays the quickest, who pays the most on time. And there's a lot of people that know that usually short-term housing, short-term executive house, and we have a whole model based on that. We won't get into that right now. But what they did is they took their best people, the best, all-time best clients that they had, and they threw them parties. It was that simple. Get these people to start, you know, and let them know what the whole point is to, you know, help introduce their friends, their most likely friends to the uh, to the apartment complex. And in some cases, they can actually make money where they can throw a party. And let's say this is Jack right here. He throws a party. Fifty of his friends show up. A few of them get an apartment, and Jack may make four, five, six, eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars just by throwing a party. So they they can actually get paid to throw a party. 
now it gets really cool, and this introduces us this idea of transactional financing, which we won't get into right now. But and that's not what they were doing here. But Jack could throw a party every couple months and make enough money to pay for his apartment where he'd be living for free. How cool is that? That's not what they did. It's just a quick side note. But basically, they took these apartment complexes, apartment complex owner, and they took their best people and threw parties for them. Threw parties for them. And this is what one of my favorite examples because if you guys remember with James and Casey they both came on they were making seven times as much money it took them a little bit longer everything I'm talking about everybody doubled their company within 90 days they doubled their they doubled or tripled within 90 days okay at the, at, at, this is the, the worst case scenario it took 90 days and they were making two to three times as much money in 90 days and this example I think this was about 120 days or four months but uh, let's say I'll call it six months so 180 days, 180 days making seven times as much money, net profit, because what they started doing, and we're going to talk about this later, is what happens when you fill all your apartment units? I guess you stop throwing parties. No, you keep throwing parties. You take those people and you send them over to your competitors, and I put competitors in quotes because we have no competitors, right? And that's where we come down to our internal versus external. That's why it makes sense to do interviews with other apartment complex owners. Because in this example, if you start working with other apartment complex owners, and if you remember in that audio with James, when you start, you fill up all these units, okay? Now let's say there's, you know, 10, uh, we keep going, there's 10 different apartment uh, complexes. You can still keep throwing those parties and sending people here. Well, you can make more money from the parties than you can from the apartments. Very cool. Seven times as much money. Okay. Now, this is one of my, and this guy, I'll go over one more example just to make this clear. Make sure you guys are all on top of it. Wow, that wasn't what I wanted to do. All right, so you guys remember our good friend, Jen, working with a young lady. This lady had a catering business. If you don't know what a catering business is, it's where they basically... Um, I don't even know everything that they do, but what she did, catering, is they delivered food to like parties. So let's say here's a party happening over here. I don't know why we keep talking about parties so much. I guess I'm just a party animal, right? So a party, they deliver food. That's the food delivery path. <laughs> All right, so they deliver food. You know what's funny is if uh, you have a hard time with my English, at least you have these wonderful illustrations, right? So they're delivering food to these parties. Here's what she did. And this is one of my, this is, of all the examples that have gone over so far, this is my favorite. She sits down with this woman, and this woman has been doing this, I think it was for 20 plus years. She was consistently the best performer, right? She was at the top of her class. This is why I talked about this earlier when I said to get our best policies, our uh, one of our, um, the recreation policy is also why we look for performers. Performers. at an S. Okay? And in this case, it was a woman. And she took her out to lunch and she asked her, how have you always been, that's the wrong slide, how have you always been able to be in this top 1% here? Because she was a 1%er for show. So how was she always able to be in the top 1%? Very good question. How does a woman in a business that is suffering, right, because of all the doom and gloom and, you know, in America, everyone's so careful about what they put in their mouth, right? <laughs> so how has she been able to be in the top 1%? And she told her something, and it's one of the most brilliant pieces of information that I know when it comes to growing so many different types of companies. I won't even get into it, but I'll just tell you this. This is a newspaper, and this is exactly what they look like. And in the newspaper, there's a section where they call notices. And I guess I should have put that instead of newspaper. They have a section where they have notices, where they put like uh, so-and-so, like obituaries and things like that. Notices. And in that notice section, people will sometimes put, oh, our little kid turned five, or Billy turned eight, or there's a bar mitzvah you know, for so-and-so, or happy birthday, or happy anniversary, or something like that. So... People will advertise that they're having some sort of party or they're having some sort of get-together celebration or they'll just congratulate somebody in their life on some accomplishment. They graduated or they had a kid or they had twins or they beat cancer or something like that. And what this woman would do, and this is what her big secret was, 
for years, and I have not met anybody in the catering business or any other business that does this or does it on the scale that she did, is she would take that notice every week. I think it was every couple weeks or whenever business was slow. So it wasn't – she did not do it with policies, right? That was her – you know, imagine what happens when you do it with policies. You don't need to do it magic, because I'm about to tell you. So what she did is they would go and they would take uh, get some. Uh, look at this when I look at this handwriting, I get a little. I feel like the screen looks. She would go and she would go to these notices and basically send these people a gift. Her idea was anybody that would pay the money. Okay, if you're going to pay the money to tell everybody about a party or to tell everybody about an accomplishment, you definitely want to have a party. And what kind of party are you going to have? A small party or a big party? A pretty big party, right? You're probably not a penny pincher, generally, right? And you're probably definitely going to want that catered. So what this woman would do, how she got here is she would, every time that would happen or any time she needed business, she would send these people a thank you card or a flower or something, you know, here's a flower pot. She would send them something in the, like an ice cream cone, ice cream flowers. Some She would send them a little gift. So what they did, and they worked on this very, it's very simple process. Just go to your notices Right, and make sure what are we going to do first of all? What are we going to take that brilliance? What are we going to do with that brilliance? We are going to policize it, right? If we're going to send gifts to people that run ads, right? Send gifts, right? We have our noun. What do we need for this? We need a verb and a noun. So we have our verb and our noun send gifts. We want to send 10 gifts a day, 10 gifts every two days, 50 gifts every week, right? So, as creating that policy. They took this catering business, and it exploded. In fact, it was just like I talked about earlier with the apartments. They didn't have enough business. So she started working with other catering, other catering groups and sending those clients to them as well. And then actually going to real estate as well, because then these same people, anytime uh, somebody would run an ad about getting married or having a kid or things like that, they would take the same model here, the same consumers they were getting, and start working with real estate groups. I won't get into that stuff right now because that was a whole nother venue of craziness, and Sonny and Kay have worked on this stuff, and they've done amazing things with this simple model, finding people that run notices and send them a gift, and the miracles can happen. But what they did with this catering business, she was making about $1,500 at that job because she had a standard job. Right, she went from fifteen hundred dollars all the way over here to fifteen k. It was ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month, and she wasn't doing any of the work. By the way, she would help that business, that catering business, get these clients, send them over, and then with other when they were too busy, they they didn't have enough uh, staff to handle the business. She started working with other catering companies and sent them the business that she was getting. And this has been done in several different areas. But this is a simple way of taking this one idea from this one woman, policizing it, right? Policizing it. I don't want to write, we don't have time to write it all out. Policizing it and using that brilliance. We take that brilliance, we policize it, and miracles happen. That's how you go from zero or from $1,500 a month to $15,000 a month with doing less work. One of my favorite reasons why the, I, I love this example is first of all, this woman did have a job. But how soon could you do something like that at a job? You could do that on day one. And you know you could do that on day one because it's written down here. I'm just delaying to give myself time to write it. You could do this all on day one. You could walk in, know exactly with that part of our dialogue, understand how to get that, how to policize that, and within starting on the first day, you could start basically quitting that job, walking away from the $1,500 a month income, and uh, starting to build that $15,000 a month income. Make sense? Okay, let's get to our assignment here. Okay, our assignment, we're going to do this in... Blue. Okay, so assignment two. All right, we just talked about our BB profiling. So what are we going to do? Guess, guess, a three by one again. You guys are so good. I knew you were on that. Three by one. All right, we want to go. And we want to have three conversations, okay? We want to have... There are three different uh, three different industries. Remember, this is our industry. This is the number of companies in each industry. If it was three by two, it'd be out here, right? You have six conversations. So multiply this by this. That's how many conversations total you're going to have. All right? We're going to have a three by one, and we're going to help them develop their BB profile. So this is the conversation we want to go through. 
with these people. This is the process we want to go through with uh, with these guys. Who are their biggest and baddest clients? What are three to five common traits that they have? And what would be three policies to find more? The cool thing is that whether or not you work with this company, I want you to really help them, to give them what you would do. Just explain what you would do if they blow you off, or they're not. Uh, maybe they're not. Um, you know, they're not going to prioritize it. That's okay. At least you did your part. You helped them. And later on, we everyone's eventually going to come around. We never lose hope. We have, you know, we have hope for everybody. Our goal is to help people, but um, help them, help themselves, and you know, they'll come around. Right? You, you're going to do so incredibly well. I'm just going to be blown away, and so are they, right? So we're going to have three conversations, and then what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Guess, guess, guess. You got it. You're so good. you like a little mind readers. One of them is going to be da -da -da -da, the GXM guy or gal, right, that you're going to work with. Make sense? So we're going to do three by one. You're going to help them develop that BB profile, and then one of them is going to be your GXM candidate. How many different, uh, we had three, this is a three-part series. How many parts have we gone through? This takes calculus, right? No, it doesn't. We had three, this is our three-part series. We've gone over the recreation policies. Boom, done. We've gone over the BB profile and we just did it. Boom, done. Now we've got the Hectupler method. That's going to be next. But we're coming back to our assignment. This is the assignment now. Help them put that BB profile in place. Let us know how it goes. And we'll see you back here for the third and final part. See you soon.